An assault weapons ban has no chance of passing because Republicans will block it in the Senate with a filibuster, and it's not even guaranteed to get the support of all 50 members of the Senate Democratic Caucus. Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Braden. This is Langley Outdoors Academy, and thank you for stopping by. All right, guys, for this episode of The Bullet Points this morning, we are going to talk about this whole assault weapons ban coming from the House thing again. Because the question is not really, is it coming out of the House? Is it going to the House? Is it going to pass the House? The question is all about the Senate. On this channel, we dive into the why, and we are going to pass the blessing of the Second Amendment along to the next generation by analyzing things like we're about to cover. Everything's going to be linked in the description box below, and I'm going to show you a lot of the things that a lot of people aren't saying about what the House is doing right now, because this is an incredibly important part of the conversation that we all need to be aware of. Like I said, everything is linked. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you agree, if you don't agree, if you see value in this information, and we'd love to have that subscription because we're always trying to get more people in the fold to put information about this type of stuff out quickly and accurately. Thank you so much for your consideration. Let's dive into this because I want to talk about HR8, excuse me, HR 1808. It's on the bill right on the uh, screen right here. This is the bill that's coming out of committee and it's going to go to the House and more than likely is going to pass the House. This is the new version of the assault weapons ban. Okay, this is what Biden has been asking for. Now, the question is not, is it going to get out of committee? Because Jerry Nadler runs that committee. That guy, whoa. It's going to get out of that committee. And Nancy Pelosi, which we're going to cover here in a second, has also said, well, yeah, we probably have the votes for this. Hey, let's do it. And this is where it kind of becomes consequential. Because getting out of the House, yeah, a ham sandwich can get out of the House right now. It's been proven on multiple occasions. But an interesting little fun fact is every single gun control bill that has come out of the House since Biden was inaugurated from H.R. 8 to 1446 to presumably 1808, all of the gun bills that have come out of the House originated in the House, not a single one of them tradition or excuse me one a single one of them has hit the floor of the Senate not even for the vote hasn't even hit the floor including HR 8 and 1446 which are very small in comparison to a full on AWB but that's what we're going to talk about all right so here's the article in reference and I want to show you some things that the Senate itself is saying including Schumer main gun control advocates and gun control groups check this out Senate Democrats face new pressure to pass assault weapons ban this is on the 8th of July this year. So this is a week ago, literally seven or eight days ago, all right? And this is the big point that I want to bring up, which sets the tone for the whole conversation we're about to have. Schumer has expressed his reluctance to hold accountability votes on gun control legislation, in which Democrats bring a bill to the floor that has little chance of passing. Such votes are risky because while they fire up the Democratic base, they also risk a backlash from Second Amendment-driven voters. Now, that's interesting tie-in because that's something that Schumer said when the whole gun control push, push started under the Senate bipartisan deal. He literally said, I'm not going to do an accountability vote because it puts Democrats who are in tight races up against the wall and puts in a bad position. That's what he openly said. Then the Senate bipartisan bill came about. But let's continue. The Democratic leader told colleague on the floor after the situations that we went through that he was more interested in working with Republicans than holding political messaging votes on the floor on an assault weapon and high capacity clips. It's magazines, bypass it. But that's the whole point. Let's keep going because I want to show you where we are now. This is incredibly important to see the whole picture here. The Senate just approved a bipartisan gun safety bill last month that was signed into law by President Biden. But even at the time, it was seen as an effort insufficient to truly cut into gun violence. The narrow legislation won support from all 50 of the Senate's Democrats and 15 Senate Republicans, but was opposed by most of the GOP in the House and the Senate. And Democrats themselves are divided over an assault weapons ban, which could be a risky vote for vulnerable Democratic incumbents in swing states. There it is again. If Pelosi is on a quest to shore up her base from a Democratic perspective around gun control, as this article is alluding to, but the Senate is not going to do it because it makes them vulnerable, you can see this is much more of a politically driven move than an actual accomplishing move. Not to mention the fact that everything we're about to go through puts even more details on that. Let's dive into it. Again, I'm not putting a over-under on is this going to pass, is this not going to pass. What I'm showing you is the road, like the overall map of what's going on, and you guys can tell me if you think it is or it isn't in the Senate. Senate Majority Leader Charles Schumer, Democrat New York, sidestepped 
such a vote after deadly shootings at the situations you guys know about, opting to work with Republicans on more modest reforms. So he sidestepped AWBs and magazine bans back when this whole bipartisan gun deal was going through. Democrats are finding themselves embroiled once again in a debate over whether to bring an assault weapons ban and high-capacity magazine ban, as well as universal background checks, to the Senate and House floors a few months before a difficult midterm election. Does any of this have a vein of politics versus actual accomplishment? Not to mention the fact that the universal background checks, H.R. 8 and 1446, also have not been even brought to the floor for a vote. And like I said, that is pales in comparison to an AWB. Let's keep going. This is the Senate, the senatorial campaign chairman for the Democratic side. This is the guy's in charge of getting everyone elected. Democratic Senatorial Campaign Committee Chairman Gary Peters, after the shooting situation, said he preferred to move legislation that had a chance of passing and saving lives and predicted an assault weapons ban would get little Republican support. Okay, that's the Democratic Chairman for Senatorial Elections. Here's something else he said. Quote, I think right now we just need to focus on trying to see if we can get some Republicans to support us on something common sense, he said in May. Okay? An assault weapons ban has no chance of passing because Republicans will block it in the Senate with a filibuster and it's not even guaranteed to get the support of all 50 members of the Senate Democratic Caucus. It's incredibly important to understand what they're doing. They are garnering for votes even though they are knowing and saying and telling you that this has no chance in the Senate. Those are not my words. That is literally the campaign chairman for the Democratic Party in the Senate. Okay, let's keep going. This is the VP of Brady. This is a gun control group. Christian Hain, the vice president of policy at Brady, a gun violence prevention advocacy group, said an assault weapons ban probably has the votes to pass in the House, but the path forward in the Senate is unclear. Okay, let's keep going. But even if Senate passage of an assault weapon ban is highly, highly unlikely, Hain said Congress still needs to tackle the issue. Okay, so, so far, we've got the Democratic uh, head of the entire Democratic Party in the Senate, Chuck Schumer. You've got head of gun control group Brady. You have the Democratic senatorial campaign chairman, all saying this is not likely, not going to happen, highly, highly unlikely. That's the exact quote. Ch Schumer doesn't want to put his members in a tough position two months ahead of an election. That's exactly what we've been saying on this channel for a long time. This is politically driven, this whole thing. And if it goes to the Senate, I don't even know if it would get on the floor of the Senate. But let's continue. Because now I got to hear from Nancy Pelosi because... Yeah. Speaker Nancy Pelosi, Democrat California, said in early June that the House would have a hearing and committee markup of an assault weapons ban, but the House debate was soon eclipsed by bipartisan Senate negotiations over the gun safety bill. So this isn't even new. They were putting this out in June when they wanted this to be their answer to gun violence, but it was eclipsed by the, gun, the bipartisan deal in the Senate. Translation, eclipse means no one supported it because they went with their deal in the Senate. Again, not a single bill from the House on gun control has made it even to the Senate floor. Not one. It's incredibly important to understand because these guys are screwing with you. In those talks, Senators John Cornyn and Tom Tillis immediately rejected proposals to implement universal background checks, ban assault weapons for people between the ages of 18 to 21, and to ban high-capacity magazines. How... How can you go from that to accepting a AWB? Again, I am not saying what is going to happen because I'm not a fortune teller. I can show you what's occurring. I can tell you what we've got going on with the national polling. I can tell you what we've got going on with an election about two or two and a half months from now. This would be political malpractice to do any kind of action on this from the Democrat side in the Senate. If you were to do this on the Republican side, that's political suicide. And that's what I've got for you guys. Let me know what you think in the comments field below, and I will see you tonight at the 9 p.m. segment. I'm Braden. See you later.